Two sisters struggling with their health now say eating only animal products has eliminated their problems. Have a look. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley. And I'm Sarah. And we are sisters, best friends, and carnivores. You might be thinking, what the heck is a carnivore? We only eat from the animal, so no grains, no vegetables, no fruit, no fiber. It might seem insane, but that's why we're here to explain to you how we came to this place. So let's back it up about six years ago, where Sarah and I thought we were doing everything we could for our health, eating super healthy, eating a bunch of whole grains, eating our fruits and vegetables every single day, avoiding fats, and we just kept getting sicker and sicker. Constant inflammation, migraines, chronic constipation, acid reflux, brain fog, fatigue, pressures on my body, poor metabolic health, and we finally became diagnosed with undifferentiated connective tissue disease with symptoms aligning with lupus. So we decided to go plant-based last summer. Vegan lifestyle absolutely works for some people, but for our bodies, it was not working. Then we switched to a ketogenic diet. We were starting to feel better, but all of our symptoms still weren't resolved. So being the science nerd that I am, I just did a bunch of reading about carnivore and it all started to make sense. So I just jumped in. I really like the taste of raw beef. I love raw egg yolks, love raw beef fat. As I go more carnivore, I actually like crave this. Since switching to this carnivore way of life, all of the remaining autoimmune symptoms that we've been dealing with have been resolved. It's just been so empowering to be able to take back our health. Sarah and Ashley now join us via Skype. Welcome. What do you guys eat in an average day? We eat two meals a day. Typically, it will have some uh, muscle meat, so any cut of steak is fair game. Then we'll have some organs, so whether that's liver or heart, and then a lot of animal fats, such as eggs and beef fat trimmings. And I understand you guys also eat a decent amount of raw meat. Is that true? We have had raw food before. I'm sure you've heard of like steak tartare. But for the most part, we don't, we don't focus on raw foods. We cook most of our foods. We have had it before, but it's not our normal day-to-day. -day. Yeah. The symptoms that you were having, you, you felt that you were sick, you felt that you were off. You mentioned that you thought you may have an autoimmune or a connective tissue disorder. Tell us about the symptoms you had when they started and, and why you thought that in fact was what you had. I've dealt with chronic constipation um, since high school. So that was one of the symptoms that I was dealing with. It was common that I would go seven, eight, nine days without pooping. Um, so I'd also deal with like bloating, indigestion, acid reflux. Um, other symptoms I was dealing with was Raynaud's in my toes. Um, I also was having chronic fatigue, brain fog. And then I had a lot of anxiety, which was manifesting as panic attacks and insomnia. So that's kind of like an overview of the symptoms that I was dealing with. Yeah. And so a lot of Ashley's were going on under the surface where mine kind of manifested on my skin. So I would deal with the what you call the butterfly rash on your face so red inflammation along the nose line and then rashes on my skin so I would go out in the sun and develop like a hive reaction almost I had zero sun tolerance it was really really strange um constant eye infection so I thought pink eye was like a normal thing for people to get like once a month because it would just constantly happen to me dry eyes dry mouth swollen and inflamed joints and then the reason that I actually went to the doctor to get checked out is because I have been dealing with like a lack of blood flow in my limbs for so long. So my, my lower half of my legs would turn like purplish orange. And so that's why I originally went to the doctor. And then that's when I got my blood test results, which showed elevated ANA, a low C3, um, and a few other things that were kind of pointing towards being diagnosed with lupus. But at the time, I didn't have the like perfect blood work for that official diagnosis. And this was all... The original time I went to the doctor was probably, what, 2017? 17, but these symptoms have been going on probably since mm. 2012. Sarah and Ashley have been working with Dr. Paul Saladino, who joins us now also discuss, is uh, internist nutrition specialist, Dr. Melina Jampolis, weighing in via Skype, we have cardiologist, Dr. Joel Kahn. And so I wanna spend a little time digging a little deeper here into why this may be working for um, Sarah and Ashley. But more importantly, I just wanna ask you, Dr. Saldino, when you're looking at this and, and you say, okay, all animal products all the time, that's it. 
nothing else. Why, why did you decide to, to uh, recommend that approach? So to be fair, when I first heard about this diet a few years ago, I thought it was a little bit crazy too. And what I discovered when I really dug into the research was eye-opening, it was so revealing. I think that some of the most eye-opening things that I discovered in my research was all of these toxins that are found in plants, from lectins, isothiocyanates, oxalates, polyphenols, all of these things can be triggering to the immune system by damaging the gut. And I think this is what's such a radical concept here, so that when we eliminate plants, we're eliminating fiber, and we can certainly talk about the lack of human need for fiber or the lack of actual medical evidence that fiber is beneficial for humans, but we're also eliminating all of these potentially damaging things that can cause immunology, you know, immunologic activation in humans. And I think that's what we see going on here, is that people are, when they're eating a carnivore diet, and there are thousands of people doing this now, including myself, we get all of these nutrient-rich foods without any of the toxins found in plants, and we see incredible changes in terms of all sorts of diseases beyond, I mean, autoimmune diseases across the board are changing in a way that just is so striking to me. Dr. Jim Poulos, I will allow you to, to respond. I don't know what research you're reading, but there are literally thousands of studies showing the benefits of polyphenols. Let's start with those, for example, plant-based nutrients in the diet. And specifically in terms of lupus, and these poor girls, if they have an autoimmune condition, could be eliminating foods that have been proven to actually benefit lupus. Plus, they're young girls. You're, by eating such a heavy meat diet, they increase their risk of premenopausal breast cancer by 65% colon cancer, they're not worried about it now, but this is a lifestyle, they've said it themselves, if they continue this for the next 40 years, I can almost guarantee you that they have, they will have colon cancer, and I pray not breast cancer too. I like the idea of eliminating toxins, I think, you know, there's a lot of pesticides in foods, but the idea that the parts of plants that protect them from against the environment, which is what you're talking about in terms of lectin and polyphenols, are somehow detrimental to humans. We're not plants. We don't live on f air and water and sunshine. We're humans. And these, the polyphenols in particular, have extraordinary benefits in terms of health. There's hundreds of studies. I would challenge you to show me a single study that shows um, any harm from meat in terms of the gut that's interventional. So much of what we're looking at here with meat, it's been wrongly vilified. You're making these claims that meat is going to increase the risk of breast cancer or colon cancer. This is completely false and unfounded. Meat and animal foods are the most nutrient-rich foods on the planet that humans have been eating throughout our evolution. I'm not to saying imagine, meat is not nutrient to imagine, I'm not a vegan to imagine that person. Something, to imagine that a food that has been at the center of our evolution throughout our path as humans would cause colon cancer, heart disease, or anything is completely evolutionary and inconsistent. And there is not a single study in existence that shows that eating meat at an interventional level is an increased risk of colon cancer. There's not a single heart study heart with nutrition and okay, interventional Okay, so studies, what I don't want this to become to is a, a, a yeah. food fight That's between what you two, but what, I, what I would actually address is there are so many different theories on food. And I just cannot handle it when someone says, someone vilifies all fruits and vegetables, someone else vilifies right. all meats. What I do care about is long-term health. Dr. Khan, you're a cardiologist, and when you start to look at eliminating highly processed foods, I think it's all, a, I think it's a win for everyone. So let's start with a common ground here and then go from there. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. This is the Harvard School of Public Health food plate. I do not believe we ever need to do another recut of this. You drink water, you eat fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and healthy protein. This is not a vegan exclusive diet. This is put a piece of beef, salmon, or chicken. I would suggest organic. These girls' intake of pesticides and herbicides, unless they're spending premium dollars in organic meats, will catch up with them. And I am so happy they're feeling better. That's the medical doctor role. But nonetheless, you cut out garbage and you put in a balanced diet, and that's Canada, that's Australia, that's Italy, that's our USDA. I wonder what Dr. Saladino, a colleague of mine and a psychiatrist was doing research on this morning in the National Library of Medicine PubMed is all the research studies that are randomized on the carnivore diet. There is not one. I want to share with you when his colleague, Dr. Sean Baker, an orthopedic surgeon, ate one year on the carnivore diet, his hemoglobin A1C was 6.3. That's pre-diabetic. His testosterone was under 250. It took 
a long time to get him to publish his data and he's never republished it. I don't know if Dr. Saladino publishes his personal labs. He's never published an article in the National Library of Medicine on this diet. I can find randomized studies on leeches for back pain and cupping for back pain. We don't have a case report about the carnivore diet and what it does to the immune system, what it we does to lipids. Do. My patients on the ketogenic diet have had cholesterol of 700 in four to six weeks. Now, I don't have personally any patients on the carnivore diet, um, and I wouldn't necessarily discourage them if they were at the end of the road, but man, I'd be checking their labs and then I'd be writing it up in a medical journal uh, based on the positive or negative effects. So um, from, uh, from 35,000 feet, this is um, not the scientific method unless Dr. Saladino will contribute to the medical literature and help us understand how this happens. But that's the scientific literature. That's not TV and blog. So I say no to carnivore until we have science. That's the medical doctors require. Dr. Saladino, when you're recommending this diet, what risks do you discuss with your patients? I don't think there are any risks to eating animal foods exclusively. There are no risks in terms of kidney function. Mm -hmm. There are many studies which show that high protein diets do not affect kidney function. Okay. There are no studies interventionally that show that eating meat is going to increase the risk of any single cancer. There are no risks to eating the foods that we have been eating as humans for our entire existence. As an attorney, I would ask you, you're a medical doctor, is that correct? Absolutely. And you are a psychiatrist, am right, I correct? Right, I did a residency in psychiatry. So what do you know about nutrition? What is Where any... did you gain your background in nutrition? Listen, this is, I think... No, is you a... listen to me and answer my question. Now I'm asking you I'm... to tell us where your background emanates from. I went to medical school, and I studied nutrition in medical school, yeah. and I studied nutrition independently. One of the crazy things about medical school is that it teaches you how to read articles. I'm a doctor. I know how to read articles. So have you I know done how to any read the independent literature. testing? Have you written any articles that was as suggested by the physicians who've been here today? What does writing articles have to do with my well, knowledge? Well, because I could become you. I could be you as an expert because I read all of the data and all of the um, articles on this subject. Now I'm an expert? That doesn't make me an expert. With and the I proper background and with the medical training, like, medicine needs to think about teaching doctors more nutrition in medical school. But it is up to us to educate ourselves. Just because there's a degree that says a doctor doesn't mean that we have or don't have medical nutritional knowledge. The it's bottom line fair. is you practice psychiatry, am I correct? I practice medicine. I you think practice the, psychiatry, I is that correct? medicine. So what makes you an expert in this? Because an expert in what? An expert in understanding human physiology? This is medicine. The, separation of human into organ systems doesn't serve the patient. To say that because I'm a psychiatrist, I don't know about nutrition is a completely- I didn't say that. That's Your what you expertise were inferring. That's is what you the were mind. inferring. Well, where does the inflammation come from that causes depression and anxiety? It comes from the body. It doesn't come from the brain. It's a scary thought process that is all you need to do is read articles to make you an expert. How I want to know what kind of testing you've done, what kind of data you have, what you yourself have found regarding these issues. I'm not sure. Other than what reliance is on other people's I'm not mind. sure I understand your question because that's how you anyone You don't want to listen to my question because I'm, you know I'm right. No, me, you're wrong. May I ask you a question? What, when you talk about the animal diet. Wait when, a second. When you I talk need to about, be given the floor to respond to this. This isn't fair. Okay. Right? Anyone gathers fair. data by reading articles. Anyone gathers data by learning. What you're suggesting is not a fair criticism of me. I'm a board certified physician nutrition specialist. Right. I have been practicing nutrition exclusively. I'm trained as an internist. I was originally board certified in internal medicine. I have spent 20 years. You've been dallying in this for a few years, reading articles. I've been doing it, working with patients, my oath is first do no harm. And I am not a plant-based person. I don't advocate only plants. I think meat, I think there is nutrient density. I think getting rid of the processed foods and the toxins in processed foods, that's what's damaging the, the gut. Show me the study that I, meat is dangerous. Show me the study that broccoli is dangerous okay. to lupus. Okay, wait, 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 I will show you the study. Can you please just provide the name of one reputable medical journal that supports the meat diet. That's what they are asking. Right. Thank you. So in 1930, there was a study published in the British, the British Medical Journal of a, uh, a year-long, a year-long investigation of two people in Bellevue Medical Hospital who were eating an exclusive carnivore diet. 
And during that period of time, these people experienced no negative effects, no dangerous changes in blood pressure, kidney function. They only experienced good things, a little bit of weight loss, and came out of the study saying that they felt better than when they started. So there have been prolonged, detailed studies of a full carnivore diet. It's a one-year study known. from 1930. Of two people. Has there been anything since 1930 with more than two people? There was a study at Harvard done looking at the carnivore diet with regard to gut flora. And so they put people on a carnivore diet for one week, and they looked at changes in gut flora, and they didn't see any change in the microbiome in terms of alpha diversity. There was no One week. Literally, there are thousands and thousands of studies that show the benefits of, of fruits, vegetables, nuts. And, and we're Surely not saying meat's bad for you. Right. I ate meat last night. But you <laughs> keep getting back to, no one is saying meat is bad for you. Right. What we are saying is, if all you eat for your whole life ever is just meat, that's not good. Do I don't have know? to be a doctor. I'm just like, flat. I'm blown away right now. Here's the beautiful thing. Unequivocally, people can have different diets and be healthy. There are people yes. who eat nothing but, nothing but plants, right? There, there are, are, there are people who eat primarily animal based Significant decline in health outcomes. And I don't know that anyone here is suggesting that a plant-based diet is the way to go, but right. um, what I am suggesting is that there are toxins in plants, that we do not need things in plants, and that there are no studies showing that meat is damaging for humans. Dr. Khan, go ahead. I just want to say, unfortunately, it's going to be 10 to 20 years till we can really judge if there's actually ever a prospective study of more than two people in the 1930s, cancer and heart disease risk. These are slow growing processes and meaning it one week of a microbiome study, one year in a metabolic lab in the 1930s when they didn't know what high sensitivity C-reactive protein is are not meaningless, but they did not win the day to day. And I know everybody knows that. The National Institutes of Health just gave the Cleveland Clinic $12 million of our taxpayer money to study the impact of meat on TMAO and the microbiome because there are 1,000 studies that are indicating harm. And I am a world expert on TMAO, Dr. Salatin. Don't take me on this. You will not be happy. I will not be kind. Wait 10, 20 years before you play with this dangerous diet. The reason this is dangerous is when people become so blinded by their own personal agenda that they start vilifying everything else. So I actually, I don't, Dr. Khan is a vegan, okay? I'm not. Mm -hmm. And so if Dr. Khan, if he said right now that anyone who eats any animal-based products is jeopardizing their health for the rest of their lives, I would say, Dr. Khan, you're wrong. I, I, I'm not saying, like, in my opinion, I think there are people out there who include meat in their diet and do really well. But you cannot sit here and say that the best, like, if every single person in this room eliminated all fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds from their diet, yeah, well, you cannot sit here and look me in the eyes and, and tell me that, that we have data that we're not potentially ruining all of our health over the long term. What I am saying is not that we should all eliminate all plants from our diet. What thank I'm, you, thank you, thank what, you, what I am thank saying you, thank you. Is I am, bringing, thank you. I am bringing attention to the notion that fruits and vegetables contain things that can be harmful to humans. And in cases where humans are not getting better, we should consider a carnivore diet that ex excludes those as a safe option because there are no detriments to eating only meat. So back to Sarah and Ashley, because this is important. I like the point you just made. I thought that was very valid. If, if you're Sarah and Ashley and you've tried every possible diet and, and it hasn't worked for you, and over the short term you try something like this, who am I to judge them? They had, they're doing well. But you are still in your 20s and you do need to think about your long-term health. So I would recommend that you keep doing what you're doing for the most part if that's what you want to do, but do not listen to anyone who tells you that all fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, fiber is terrible for you because over the long term, you might be jeopardizing your health. You just don't know it. I think it's fair to say, just like you're saying, some people thrive on eating no meat. I mean, that's great for them. Some people can thrive on eating all animal products. Who's to say? We can get all the nutrients that we need as humans by eating nose to tail carnivore approach. Yeah, and we have the blood work to back this up. Before we went this route, we were eating a very high plant-based diet and we got blood uh, nutrient panels that showed severe nutrient deficiencies. You know, it's interesting, Sarah and Ashley, when I hear your story, unequivocally, I think the way that you're eating now is probably exponentially healthier than the standard American diet. And 100%. I think that's important to note. Um, I think when you look at the standard American diet, 
It's heavy not only in processed meats, processed foods, processed carbs. Um, that's why we have seen uh, an increase in obesity, inflammatory diseases. Who am I to tell you, Sarah and Ashley, what to eat? I just hope that you, if you're truly someone who had an elevated ANA, continue to work with a rheumatologist while you, you know, while you very closely watch your health. I would also just add that I'm stoked that you're this passionate. My rheumatologist simply prescribed me medications that were going to band-aid my symptoms. They and had I'm no not hating on diet. rheumatologists or anything. Just, um, but yeah. I think what you said was great. Ashley and I resolved our symptoms going carnivore by the elimination of plants and eating a nutrient-dense meat-based diet. That is not to say that we will never incorporate some sort of vegetable into our diet again. I just think the main takeaway is that carnivore can be so therapeutic for susceptible humans who might have a weakened immune system. And it is a route that somebody could consider taking once nothing else has worked for them as it did for us. And that is a safe route because we can get all the nutrients that we yeah. need by eating a nose to tail carnivore Nobody approach. needs to say you need to eat this way for the rest of your life, but it is a therapeutic route you can take if nothing else has worked for you. And I think we can all agree on that. And if you are, if you're passionate about this, which I really think you are, I would just hope that you would do research that can be published in one of the journals and so that we can build upon what you're learning. So I've written a book on this. It's called The Carnivore Code and there are over 400 studies it, that I cite in there. We are with, beginning well, studies we, on the carnivore diet specifically, I think but in that book I address every excellent. single one of these issues. That's excellent, but when we, when we reference studies, we think about peer-reviewed journals. Right. So I, I know you're passionate about it and I think that's great and I just want to encourage you to continue to gather information and then submit that information to your peers so that you can come and say, no, no, wait, it's not just me. I'm not just saying this. I'm basing this on science. And when I tell patients that there are no risks associated with this carnivore diet, I am basing it on hardcore science because we all want the best thing for patients. My concerns are that you are claiming all of these studies and you're vilifying plants, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes. Even Sarah and Ashley have acknowledged that this over the short term has helped their symptoms. Right. I applauded them for that. They're eating grass-fed animal products. I, I've written books talking about if you're going to eat meat, animal-based products, that's the way sure. to go. That I think a lot of the studies that have um, been done that have vilified animal-based products, they've been done on conventionally raised animal-based mm -hmm. products, which is very different. Look, I know where you're coming from. You're creating a name for yourself right now. You're writing a book, and, I, and I'm proud of you for that. But you have to be a little bit careful because you're acting like an expert in everything. You're not an expert in autoimmune disease. You're certainly not an expert in nutrition. However, you have become, you, you, have, you have found this, this area, the carnivore diet, and that's your thing, and, I, and that's great. But what I would recommend when you're talking to patients is feel free to say, try this, see how you're doing. But this isn't the end all be all. And there, not, are, there are numerous. It's not for everybody. It's and not everybody for everyone. Listening has to take that as the key. So I, I thank everyone for being here. But most importantly, Sarah Nash, I'm just happy that you guys are doing yes. well. And yeah. you're, you're clearly well read, knowledgeable. And how I would like to close this out to all of our viewers is you need to find the diet that works for you. In general, extremes tend to not be the best approach. But educate yourself. And the reality is if you're working with a physician and your physician poo-poos food as medicine, find a new physician. We unequivocally know that food does impact inflammation in our bodies. You have to find the right diet for you that hopefully will lead you to a long, happy, healthy life. I thank all of our guests for being here today. Really appreciate it. Sarah and Ashley, we wish you nothing but the best going forward. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us.